we are in week five, lecture one, and we've already covered uh, geared rotational system transfer functions. So let's go over the exam, right? And it's, like I said, this first exam is actually pretty mundane, right? And people made very, uh, it's not an important mistake, but conceptual error. So I'll highlight where people lost points. And I've, I know one error I made on some people's exams. So basically you have one week that is still, uh, lecture one of week six to get your exam fixed, right? But it's only a couple of points, which I took off and I should not have taken it off. So I'll address that. And then if you notice, your next homework is actually not due till week seven, right? That's by design because what you should do is during the intervening two weeks, start going over your book problems again. Well, start with the exam problems, right? And look at what mistakes you did and work on it. Like the issue is going to be, like I said before this exam, it gets very conceptual starting with next lecture, right? So this exam was actually the easiest exam. So if you didn't do well, well, see, I, I don't curve the class and the grade distributions here. Okay, so I'll see, uh, let's say your, uh, your final is the highest, okay? That's what this goes by. Then this exam is worth only 20%, right? Let's say you got a 50 on this exam you lost like pretty much like 10% of the grade. So you still have a shot at a good grade in the class. But assuming you do well, that is on the rest of the course and you still can, right? Although it gets conceptual. So you have some time, not a lot of time to try and fix things. So well, let's get started. So you have like a couple of weeks, but let's go through this and okay. So here are all the questions on the exam. So this first problem, translational mechanical system setup, set up the system of equations, right? So this was, the issue here is, so the, what are the issues? So the issue is uh, errors in fundamental physics, okay? And that's where people lost most of the points because you there's nothing else in this problem in the sense I just ask you to set up the system of equations, right? Let's say I ask you to even solve for the transfer, any transfer function. You will still lose a lot of points if there are errors in fundamental physics. And this is basically the sign. Okay, that's what I mean. So let's look at this. So at x1 of, well, at this degree of freedom, okay, I'm just going to set it up in the S domain. Like it was asked during, ex in the exam, some people set it up in the time domain. They got it right. They got points, okay? Some people did this, so which for which I also gave points. They called this M1, they called this M2, they called this uh, D or FV. They said this as K and they wrote it in terms of M1, M2, D, K. That's fine, right? As long as you get the signs right. So at X1, what happens is you have M1 S squared plus SD plus K times X1 of S if you want, equals f of s, right? So these forces are opposing this force. If you did not get this right, then you lost a lot of points on this problem because the essence of the problem is right here. Okay. Minus, the other mistake was, so this was one issue, uh, incorrect coupling impedances okay so what that means is uh, basically over here this is x2 of s and the coupling impedances are sd and k yes so you have a negative sign here because when you look at it from the perspective of the first degree of freedom as i hold this one still and i pull this to the right these two coupling impedances are pulling this to the right in the direction of F, yes? But some people wrote here plus SM1. That actually, I don't remember how many points I took off. You can, it's not as much as the signer, okay? The signs are like insanely important in this problem. Not only in this problem, in any problem, right? So, and then at X2, you basically have, let's see, minus, so this from the perspective of S2, X1 of S, plus in this case, it's going to be M2S squared plus SD plus K 
times x2 of s equals 0, all right? And some of you wrote f of s here, which doesn't make sense because f does not act on this, right? So unfortunately, these are silly mistakes, but uh, they're, I mean, I, they're, they're not, right? They look like silly mistakes, but they're really not. So the way you avoid this, I'm hoping, is you be more mindful, all right? If you really don't understand why these signs are negative and what these coupling impedances are, then A, you have to see me in office hours. B, you really have to work hard to catch up because after this, like I said, it gets pretty conceptual, right? So any questions on this? Yeah. All right. So next problem. This problem, the main issue was this. So let's say this is Z2, and I call this Z1. Okay, so what I have, so there's a solution. So I'll write the issue later. What kind of an amplifier is this? It's a non-inverting amplifier, right? So the issue was, people wrote this is an inverting amplifier. So this is the issue, and this is incorrect, right? So this is the first issue, inverting amplifier, and obviously this is wrong. Why? Because the input goes into the non-inverting terminal, right? Number one. Number two, this is a this is a much more fundamental problem, number two, in the sense, for people who identified this as a non-inverting amplifier, they wrote the gain V in out over V in as Z2 over Z1. This is wrong, right? It's 1 plus Z2 over Z1. I'll drive it. Either you remember it correctly, and if you don't remember it, you should know how to derive it, okay? In other words, when you write this down, you better be damn sure this is the gain. It's not. How do you derive it? Well, looking at this picture, so from here, uh, so here is Vn, here is Vp. There are no rail voltages. So Vn equals Vp equals Vi, all right? Then we do KCL at Vn. So KCL at Vn means this current is zero. Let's call this I1. Let's call this I2. I1 is what? Minus Z1 over V. Minus Vn over Z1, okay? So I was about to make a mistake in Ohm's law, but so that's the thing. You got to be mindful of what you're doing, right? You just can't write stuff without thinking, right? When you write stuff like adding currents to voltages, it it's a disaster, right? It basically tells me you're not thinking and you will get like no points for it. You just can't write that, right? So then I2 is what? Vn. Minus, so this is actually zero because this end is grounded and current is flowing from left to right. So zero minus Vn over Z1 equals Vn minus V0 over Z2. Okay, Vn is Vp, but that's Vi. This is minus Vi over Z1 equals Vi over Z2 plus V0 over Z2. Okay, so basically, actually, what am I doing? I don't need to do this. So this is Vi minus V0 over Z2. I'm looking for V0 over V in. So let's see. You get V in times 1 plus Z2 over Z1 equals V0. Yes? So let's see. I cross multiply Z2 here. I move Vi to one side, V0 to the other side. Yes? This is what I get. So in other words, our gain, whoops, is V0 over Vn, that's how it's defined as the voltage gain, it's 1 plus Z2 over Z1. Is that clear? So you need to be able to I mean, derive this. Right? You just can't write stuff which doesn't make sense. And I think the reason why people write that is they really don't check as they're doing their work. Right? Get into the habit of doing that. It's number one. Number two, uh, this was, the problem was people who did, I guess, the third issue is incorrect 
impedance expressions for example writing SC1 instead of 1 over SC1 okay uh, incorrectly so that's number three number four is incorrectly combining impedances okay so in other words uh, these two are in series yes these two are in parallel and a lot of folks they for example they wrote 1 over SC okay, I didn't take off points for that but you shouldn't do that because there's no C here okay there's C1 well that's fine I didn't take off points right I should not have if I did let me know so anyway what I actually expected in this question is if we had just written this right so it's V naught over V in is 1 plus Z2 is what R1 in parallel with 1 and there goes my journal editor so if you had just written like that expression correctly then you got four points for the exam for the exam for that question I didn't even expect you to simplify it further right? let's see one R1 in parallel with 1 over SC1 plus, uh, let's see, so, oops, what am I writing? Factory. All right, so 1 plus R1 in parallel with 1 over SC1, which is Z2, and Z1 is simply there, R2 plus SL, what do I call it, 1? Yes, SL1, okay? That's basically what I wanted. And you can simplify this further if you want, but I really didn't expect you to do it. If you did, that's fine. Right. No, it's not extra credit because it's part of the question. But because people, uh, so on the day of the exam, I said simplify as much as you can because I didn't expect people to do this. So I adjusted. So ideally, I should not have given points for people who just did this, but I did. Plus, you do have extra credit on the exam. All right, any questions on this? All right, transfer functions, okay? So one of the biggest issues in this problem was, so here is the issue here. So the LTI system has this transfer function. It's 1 over S plus 1. That means, let's say I have an X of S, I have a Y of S, 1 over S plus 1, well, let me put the issue over here in red because it's a huge issue, right? Is defined, ah, Y of S over X of S, is defined as 1 over s plus 1 right you just can't write I mean if you did this like I told you in lecture like a couple of weeks back, you had 0 right you you can't write y of t over x of t is transfer function okay so this is in red is an issue this is like completely wrong right basically any competent professor will not look at work after this because you just don't understand the idea right? this is how the transfer function is defined there is something called as an impulse response that's defined in terms of the time domain as a convolution but we're not going to talk about it in this course right you'll talk about it in a single systems course but this is the definition right all right so this was the biggest issue but then people had difficulty just doing partial fractions right so let's look at this so the question is asking what is y of s when x of x of t is sine t u of t so the idea is you take the laplace transform of this it's actually given to you the table up here so here is sine t omega t u of sine omega t u of t omega is 1 so it's going to be 1 over s squared plus 1 okay so this is my output response okay Point number one. Point number two is if you look at this LTI system, right? I didn't realize that, well, when I did the problem on the exam, as you were doing the exam, I realized it's 1 over S plus 1. Remember, it can be modeled by an RC circuit. We did this like, thank God I didn't give you the synthesis problem. So this is an RC circuit, right? You put a sine wave into an RC circuit, you're going to get a sine wave out, right? At steady state. That's a central concept behind linear time invariant systems 
So that's a big uh, conceptual leap and uh, nobody did that and I didn't expect you to do it. But as this part of being mindful as you're working on this, so as you do the solution, right, when you find the time domain function, it better have a sign function in there. If it doesn't, that means you screwed up, right? So, the partial fraction expansion of this is this, okay? It's A S plus B over S squared plus 1 plus C over S plus 1, okay? And, and there are also other issues that, like, I mean, you just can't, like, write. Uh, so this was one issue, okay? The second issue, whoops, why does it keep jumping? Is, let's see, issues. Was what? So writing one over s plus. I mean, you can expand this out, right? I don't know. I guess you get s cubed. So if you expand this out, you get s cubed plus s plus s squared plus one, right? So one over s cubed plus s squared plus, plus s plus one. That's not equal to one over s cubed plus one over s squared plus one over s plus one, right? That's like saying one over three plus four is the same as one over three plus one over four. Okay, this is like fundamental arithmetic errors. You just can't write this on an exam. There's no way this is true. Right? It's not possible. Okay. Point number one. Point number two. Like, well, point number, issue number three. So this was the second issue. I was like, pff, big no-no. And let's see. Some people tried getting this in the time domain. So basically you had y of as the correct time domain expression for this is... Uh, see y of s over x of s is 1 over s plus 1 which implies y of s times s plus 1 equals x of s so if you take the inverse Laplace transform you get dy dt plus y equals x of t we assume zero initial conditions because we're computing the transfer function right, whatever but uh, what people did here was they mixed this up and this up Right. You can't just, basically you can't, I, I don't even remember what they wrote. Right? You just can't mix this. So this mixing just doesn't make sense. Right? That's not what the question is asking. It's asking you to do this. Find y of t. So this is the only way I know of how to do this. That is, you have to take the partial fraction expansion. Unless you can see off the bat how to expand this, and I can't. Right? So just do this. So 1 equals A S plus B times S plus 1 plus C times S squared plus 1. So let's just expand this out. So let's see. Well, let's just plug it in, plug numbers in. Let S equals negative 1. So what happens? You get uh, negative 1. This thing drops off, yes? So you get uh, C equals 1 half. Yes? Uh, let's see, can I put S equals 0? Yes, I can. Let S equals 0 because that will take out my A. So what do I get? 1 equals B plus C. So B equals uh, 1 minus C. So B is a half. Yes? Now, uh, please check your exam. I think I took off points for some insane reason. For people you wrote B is a half and A turns out as a negative a half. Please check exam. Right? I think it took off a couple of points. I I remembered it as I was walking down. So please check exam and come back to my office and I'll give you points back. Right? So let now let's see. What else can you do? Compare coefficients of s squared on both sides, right? On the left-hand side, you have a zero here. No coefficient of s squared. On the right-hand side, I know I have my a. Yes, a squared plus b uh, plus b plus c. Yes? That's it. So a is negative a half, negative c. Yes? So please check your exam. That is, I'm pretty sure on a couple of people's exams, I've messed this up, right? Okay, 
So, therefore, uh, 1 over s squared plus 1 times 1 over s plus 1, which is our y of s, is going is equal to what? Negative 1 half over s squared plus 1 plus 1 half over s plus 1 plus, no, 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 plus s squared plus 1, right? Uh, plus 1 half over s plus 1. Yes? This implies y of t, if you take the, today is Monday. I'm really messing this up. So, negative 1 half times s. I forgot the s. Because I know one of these is sine, the other is cosine. Okay? So, which implies, if you take the inverse Laplace transform, save this. So, I get the first term gives rise to a cosine. The second term gives rise to a sine. And the third term gives rise to a dying exponential. Right? So, what I get is negative 1 half cosine of t plus 1 half sine of t plus e to the minus t u of t this is my y of t yes this is my response and you can see that my steady state is a sinusoid okay the transient dies out I mean, it has to be because i'm putting a sine function into an linear time invariant system at steady state i better get a sine function you get anything, if you don't get a sine function, you're screwed up, right? You can write this as one sine or cosine. We're using techniques from 2060, 2070, whatever, but that's not the point. Okay. So any questions on this? All right. Now, as far as the extra credit is concerned, so the issue here, and that's why it's extra credit, is we need to divide numerator by denominator okay because that's the that's why it's extra credit you have to recognize that the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator if you don't divide and if you try to blindly do this unless your math is like very very good i mean you eventually have to divide right you can't really write out the uh, response without division right at least one of you tried to divide this and it just well polynomial division, right? So let's do polynomial division. And you really don't have to divide this in the sense, look, basically, I don't know, when you, uh, divide three by two, okay? So what, what's the quotient and what's the remainder? What's the quotient when I divide three by two? One, What's the remainder? One. Okay. When you're laughing at this, it's the same thing as this. So if you can do this, you should be able to do this. All right. Yeah. You have never seen this before? Yeah. So if, exactly. This is in second grade. So, well, do this. Right. No, calculator is not an excuse. Right. Calculator should only be used to check your answer. And I can give you problems, like I can give you complex numbers problems, which I give to my 2060 students, which a calculator cannot do, guaranteed. All right, so if you can do this, do this. So in other words, okay, this is the point, right? So 3 divided by 2 is 1.5, yes? Which is 1 plus 1 half. Yes? Well, where do you get this from? So this is the quotient, okay? This is the remain. Oh, it's a different color. So here is the remainder, okay? And here is the divisor. So it's elementary division, yes? Well, since, like Derek correctly said, this is done in second grade, this is a natural. So what is this? So do the same thing. Huh? So what's the quotient? S. Okay. So you have two terms here. Yes. So I need to pick two terms for my... What is this called? This is the quotient. This is the divisor. What is this called? Dividend. Right. So what do you get? S squared plus S. Right. So you subtract. You get one. 
Correct? Therefore, S squared plus S plus 1 over S plus 1 equals S plus 1 over S plus 1. Right? You really don't have to do division to do this. Right? And you can just put it under common denominator and spot that what is on the left-hand side is the same as the right-hand side. Right? This was the crux of this problem. Because no matter if you don't do this, if you try to do like what was done in this problem, then you, I mean, you'll get stuck in the sense you have to do division somewhere. Right? Okay, so let's look at this. Therefore, y of s equals x of s. Oh, by the way, like Derek's point is correct. Like the calculator, the issue is in the second exam, right? The calculator is not going to help you. I'm going to let you use a calculator on the second exam because the computations get a little hairy, but you will see it is not going to help you. The calculator will help you once you can set up the problem, A, B, and you can check your answer. That, that's it. Practical engineering problems you cannot solve on a calculator. Wait, don't, don't get me wrong. Your calculators are powerful. I had my acquaintance from Stanford. He did his entire PhD on his TA-89 just to prove that the TA-89 is powerful, right? He said, no MATLAB, nothing. Just because I mean, the TA-89 is extremely powerful once you set up the problem. Y of s is, so it's uh, x of s times the transfer function, which is s squared plus s plus 1 over s plus 1, okay? So x of s, Laplace transform of t u of t is 1 over s squared, okay? The times s plus 1 over s plus 1. So this is 1 over s plus 1 over s squared times s plus 1, yes? So let's see if I can split this. So I got to do a partial fraction here. So can I just, sorry, mistake. So I don't know if I can. I don't think this works, right? So I think just quickly, if you want to do a partial fraction expansion of this. So now one over S squared times s plus 1 is what? What is the partial fraction expansion of this? I mean, there are, I don't think this works, right? We can try. Hey, let's just try this since we have time. Yes, I think you need a plus 1 over s, right? So let's just do this. Let's see what happens, right? Because you have to get the idea of what partial fraction expansion is. So let me just put this as question mark. So you get 1 equals s plus 1 plus, what do you get? S squared. Oh, what am I? Ah, oh, Monday, Monday, Monday. All right. So, A times S plus 1 plus B times S squared. All right? Let's see what happens. Uh, therefore, let's see. Um, let, let me do this here. How much time do I actually have? Oh, I got plenty of time, 20 minutes. Let S equal 0. So that'll take out my B, yes? So what do I get? A is 1, okay? So compare coefficients of S squared, yes? What do I get? Yes. So does this make sense? No. Derek's kidding, right? And so it, basically, it's, you're saying that 1 over s squared times s plus 1 equals 1 over s squared. That's wrong, right? It's because this doesn't work. That's what this is telling you. So, well, then you got to know it's a strict no-no, right? So you're like, all right, let's see what JP, let's try what JP said. So let, and this is the correct one, okay? Is a over s plus b over s squared plus c over s plus 1. So let's try this. Which implies it's a times see, s times s plus 1 plus b times s plus 1 plus c times s squared. So let's see. Let s equals 0. Okay. Therefore, what do you get? You get b equals 1. Yes? Let s equals negative 1, you get c equals 1. Yes? So comparing coefficients of 
s squared, what do you get? 0 equals a plus c, which implies a equals uh, negative 1. Yes? And you can see that, therefore, y of s is what? Uh, 1 over s plus 1 over s squared times s plus 1, which is zoom out. 1 over s plus minus 1 over s plus 1 over s squared plus 1 over s plus 1. Yes? So this cancels. Okay? And basically what you get is 1 over s squared plus 1 over s plus 1. It just turns out, therefore, the Laplace transitive y of t is t plus e to the minus t u of t, okay? All right? It's just an interesting system. So any questions on this? All right, so next lecture, what we're going to do is we're going to start our um, DC servo motors. So what I recommend you do is go back through your exam. You have one week to fix any mistakes right? I made, or if you feel like you need more points, talk to me about it. But you have only one week. Right? After one week, I'm going to look at it, even if I forgot to grade an entire problem. So number one. Number two, the good news, well, Actually, whatever. The, the good news is next exam you're allowed calculators, but I can tell you right now it's not going to help you, right, if you cannot set up the problem, because all of this, starting with DC servo motors, is very, very conceptual. Right? It's going to help, the whole point is these will, this will help you reinforce whatever we learned over here, but you have to be really good at the exam one stuff, so you should not make mistakes like these, right? So from now on, never ever write that, I mean, like, it's like, oh, no, 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 right, big, big, big bomb, right, don't ever do this anymore. So, all right, I will see you next lecture.